The Magic and Mystery of America's Money. Solomon's Treasure by Tracy Art Wyman, from Dragon Key Press website. The Magic and Mystery of America's Money. It is commonly known now, more so than ever before, that the United States of America was founded largely by men with a philosophy grounded in the occult. Namely the members of Freemasonry and other secret societies, who saw in the U.S. a potential new Atlantis or new Jerusalem. They foresaw the future of the United States as a beacon to the rest of the world, guiding the nations towards the formation of a new world order of peace, democracy, and enlightenment. Many people today would agree that the U.S. is indeed, in several ways, fulfilling this rule already. If nothing else, most people would certainly agree that the America has come to dominate the world financially, and that among world currencies, the American dollar is king. But what few people understand is the correlation between the esoteric doctrines of masonry, upon which the United States was founded, and the economic principles that underpin the American economy. Few understand that the dollar is a unit of magical energy, and the dollar bill itself a magical talisman. Although many words have been written by conspiracy theorists analyzing the Masonic symbols on the $1 bill, no one has yet been able to sufficiently explain why these symbols are there, or what they really mean. Certainly no researcher yet has successfully connected the markings on American money to the hidden secrets of the American monetary system. The symbolism of the American dollar bill has been the subject of Masonic conspiracy theories, since the modern version was first rolled out during the Roosevelt administration in 1935. Masonic and mystical symbolism has been used on American currency since the very beginning, and was employed as a means of distinguishing our money from that of old world Europe, which invariably featured the bust of the reigning monarch. In contrast, our founding fathers agreed that our money should be decorated with the symbols of the anti-monarchist pro-democratic enlightenment philosophy upon which the republic was founded, and many of these ideals were Masonic in origin. The Great Pyramid, the All-Seeing Eye, and quirky phrases like Dio favente perennis, God's favor through the years, or mind your business, appeared on early American currency. Indeed, the heads of dead presidents and other state figures were not shown on U.S. money until the 20th century, when it was seen as less taboo. But all researchers of the subject agree that nothing tops the modern American $1 bill for the sheer exactness and complexity of its mystical symbolism. The meaning of the symbolism is so deep, the metaphors so multi-layered, and each element so precisely placed, that although all of the other American bills have changed their appearance to prevent counterfeiting, with the heads moved off-center, and the addition of funky rainbow colors, the perfection of the $1 bill has remained intact. When analyzing the symbolism of the $1 bill, most researchers tend to focus on the repeated use of the number 13, which they always insist is an important number sacred to Freemasons, without demonstrating any proof of the supposed Masonic affinity for this particular number. This is, of course, the number of colonies that originally constituted the United States of America, and thus 13 stars have been used in American heraldry since the start of the Union, appearing not only on our first national flag, but upon many of our early coins as well. Since Freemasons were responsible for both the foundation of many of America's institutions and the design of our national symbols, it is tempting to ascribe a Masonic significance to the use of this number, and indeed there may be one. But there is no special mention of the number 13 in any known Masonic ritual, except perhaps in the rites of the Noble Order of the Shrine, where this number seems to be mentioned often, but with no particular meaning given to it. In any case, the Shriners did not exist at the time of the founding of the American Republic. None of the quintessential Masonic tomes, such as Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma, make any special note of the number. Although Pike examines the meaning of many numbers in terms of Kabbalism and sacred geometry, mention of 13 is conspicuously absent, almost like an office building from the early 20th century, in which the 13th floor has been superstitiously omitted. Even Freemason Manley P. Hall, in his 1944 book The Secret Destiny of America, where he interprets the history of the United States as the unfolding of an ancient Masonic plan, can only offer lamely that 13 symbolizes Jesus and the 12 apostles, or the sun and the 12 zodiac signs. One would expect him to offer something more interesting, but perhaps he was just being coy. Indeed, if there are any Masonic teachings regarding this number, then they are among the few Masonic teachings that have actually remained secret throughout the centuries. My research tends to indicate that there is in fact a proto-Masonic significance to this number, and one which would have been of special importance to the founders of the United States, had they known about it. At any rate, Masonic or not, the number 13 is undeniably the most omnipresent, most repeated symbol on the $1 bill, although its use isn't always explicit. Most of them are featured on the back of the bill. The pyramid on the left has 13 layers, not including the eye at the top. Above the head of the eagle on the right, there is a constellation of 13 pentagonal stars, arranged in the shape of a seal of Solomon. There are 13 leaves on the olive branch in his right talon, and 13 Jonathan arrows, as they're called, in his right. 
There are 13 horizontal divisions on the eagle's shield, and 13 vertical ones. The motto e pluribus sonum, written on the banner in his beak, contains 13 letters. So too does the motto anut coeptis, written above the pyramid on the left. Furthermore, if you add the number of letters in Novus Ordo Seclarum and Clux 1776 in Roman numerals, written below the pyramid, you get 26, or two sets of 13. On the front of the bill, at the base of the portrait of George Washington, on each side there are eight leaves and five berries, indicating another two sets of 13. There are also 13 stars on the chevron on the seal of the Treasury Department that is featured to the right of Washington, overlaying the word one. Clearly these allusions to the number 13 are no accident. This truth is compounded by the letters and permanently featured words on the front of the dollar bill, that is, words not contingent upon any changing circumstance, such as the name of the U.S. Treasurer. These words include Federal Reserve Note The United States of America This note is legal tender for all debts public and private. Washington, D.C. 1. Treasurer of the United States Secretary of the Treasury One dollar Washington The total number of letters in these words is 169, or 13 squared. Returning to the back of the bill, there would appear to be exactly 13 examples of the use of the number 13 there. But in order for this to be correct, you have to count in God we trust. Of course, there are only 12 letters in this phrase, but occupying the same space in the center on the back of the bill is the word 1, implying that we should add 1 to this sum and make 13. This leads us to the 13th example of the use of 13 on the back of the bill. There are 12 occurrences of the number 1 or the written word 1, unless you count the Latin word unum, meaning 1, use once, which makes 13 in all. In fact, this emphasis on one on the one dollar bill is yet another mysterious motif. The concept of unity could in fact be said to be the real underlying theme of the one dollar bill. And rightly so. It represents, after all, the original unit of currency upon which the American economic system is founded. It is the blueprint upon which all other dollar bills are based, and when we think of the American dollar, the first image that pops into our minds is the one dollar bill. As the official representation of the original unit underpinning the economy, its unity is expressed with the plenteous use of one, the central placement of one on the back of the bill, and the use of the motto e pluribus, unum, out of many, one, underneath the constellation of 13 stars, representing the original colonies that were unified at the creation of the United States. The theme of one is continued with the use of the first American president, George Washington, on the front of the bill, and with the word one written next to him. As well, I would include the symbol of the pyramid on the back, which according to the designers of this emblem, was meant to represent the ideal state, made up of individuals, the stones, unified into one structure, the pyramid, under the divine unifying principle, the all-seeing eye of providence. Actually, but it's all out of love. Charlie's doing push-ups, that's very good. Let me show you, Xander. This is what he does, when he's not shooting, he just does this. All day. all day, all day, all night. Usually there's a man under the <laughs> Usually, <laughs> yes, and usually he does squat thrust because his ass is in every scene. His ass all is right, its own on number on. on the call <laughs> sheet. <laughs> Other strange features include the words "enuit coeptus," he meaning God favors our undertaking, and "novus ordo seclarum," the new order of the ages. These are both based on quotes from the Roman poet Virgil, although they have been slightly altered, and both quotes referred in their original context to Jupiter Omnipites, Omnipotent Jupiter, essentially the Roman equivalent of the Judeo-Christian Almighty God. Interestingly, he pluribus anum is also a quote from Virgil slightly altered, and some see in these alterations a numerological significance. In the original Virgil poem, the words Jupiter Omnipotes, ad asibus anu coeptus, were a plea for the deity to favor my daring undertakings. The words on the back of the dollar bill not only plea for, but confidently declare, God's favor upon the daring undertaking there represented. Creation of a new order of the ages, or new global power structure, headed by the newly created Republic of the United States. For these symbols and words belong not just to the dollar bill. They are part of the Great Seal of the United States, created in 1776, at the same time the nation was founded. It is the front and back side of the Great Seal which is represented on the back of the dollar bill. The three stars around the Masonic eye represent the Trinity. Lucifer, Antichrist, False Prophet. The eagle's shield is positioned in the corner of the pyramid, the tip of his wing ends precisely at the end of the illumined light. This shows a very careful design. The eye has come down on the pyramid, New World Order Domination. The pyramid becomes a winged symbol. The Masonic eye is coming out of the eagle's eye. The New World Order will be a revived Roman Empire. Symbol of the Roman Empire was the eagle. The New World Order coming out of the Old Roman Order. The design of the Great Seal has never been ascribed to any one individual, and it has evolved a bit over the years. But the essentials of the design were sketched out right at the beginning, in 1776, the year of the revolution, emblazoned in Roman numerals beneath the pyramid on the back of the seal. That's right. 
The roundel featuring the eye above the pyramid is actually the reverse side of the great seal, and the roundel featuring the eagle is really the front. It is the front of the seal which is used to seal official US documents, not the back. Several people are known to have contributed to the design of both sides of the seal, including Benjamin Franklin, Thomas Jefferson, William Barton, Charles Thompson, and Pierre-Eugène du Cimetière, and all but one were Freemasons. The first metal die for the seal was cut by Robert Scott, a Freemason, in 1782. However, although dies were commissioned for both the front and the back of the seal, only the front was actually cut. No die was made for the back of the seal until much later, and most people were not aware that their national seal had a back to it at all, until it appeared on the dollar bill in 1935. 33rd degree Freemason and historian Manley P. Hall wrote that the reverse of the seal was not originally used, because it was regarded as a symbol of a secret society, and not the proper device for a sovereign state. Just like the Great Seal, the $1 bill was also designed by a group of Freemasons working for the government, in this case, President Franklin Roosevelt, Secretary of Agriculture Henry A. Wallace, and Secretary of the Treasury Henry Morgenthau, although the design was executed at the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, which employed exactly 13 engravers. It was Wallace's suggestion that the front and back of the Great Seal be used on the reverse of the dollar, although he originally wanted the front of the seal to be on the left, and the back of the seal to be on the right, which makes sense logically. But it was President Roosevelt who suggested switching that order, and putting the more interesting reverse of the seal on the left, which made more sense intuitively, since the Western eye naturally reads words and images from left to right. In God We Trust was not placed on the bill until 1957. However, it was originally made the national motto of the United States in 1863, at the suggestion of Treasury Secretary Salmon P. Chase, who himself had supposedly been prompted to do so by a Protestant minister, concerned with the waning of religious fervor in the American public. This man purportedly wanted to ensure that the U.S. would always be officially grounded in faith in divine providence, and thus this motto was put on all American coins ever since, although it did not appear on paper currency until much later. But in God we trust is indeed a Masonic motto one used in almost all Masonic rituals, in which the participants must pledge to always put their trust in God during the ceremonies, and this specific phrase can be found in Masonic dictionaries. <laughs>
What are you asking about? Fairness or right and wrong? Most people consider those the same thing. A stock is like a living organism, a sparrow, say. And we are able to create an emergent-based abstraction of that sparrow, which closely approximates the sparrow itself, accounting for migration patterns, wind, weather, and other variables. We can create a similar abstraction of a stock, combining the information from the specific ETFs which represent its underlying dependencies. And if we apply this to the stock, we can predict its delta following the path of its abstracted self, because nature follows abstraction. I'm sorry, you lost me. Let's start again. You sure you don't want a cookie? <laughs> 